What is up everyone? Howdy and welcome back. Zach here, live stream prepping for my um, Gatsby with Headless WordPress course. So we're a little bit ways in. We're walking through the official Gatsby tutorial. I'm talking about some stuff. I'm learning a little bit along the way. Hold on, let me just send a tweet out. Um, if you are watching and hanging out, please say howdy, say what's up, uh, subscribe, like, do all that. I'm in the chat too, as well as we're going through this. Won't really be answering too many questions unless it pertains to what we're doing, but uh, hopefully you find these things useful. So let's just jump in where we left off. Last time we started looking at the data layer in Gatsby, but now we're going to get into actually using GraphQL rather than static data. So in order to do this, it introduces a tool called Graph. EQL or GraphEQL, um, and we could find this anytime we boot up a Gatsby site. Now, it doesn't tell you to do this in the tutorial, but I went ahead and cloned the tutorial part four so that I have tutorial part five and so that I can play around. Otherwise, I think it assumes that you just keep doing um, tutorial part four and keep going with all of that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Gatsby develop and that should fire everything up. And what I want to point out here is that it shows us the local host 8000. So that's our normal site. We could pop that up. That's our pandas eating. Uh, we already built that thing, played around with it. That's cool. Oop, too soon. Okay. Now we also have this local host GraphQL. And so if we boot that up, then we get GraphEQL, which is an interface for querying stuff with GraphQL. And you're going to see if you haven't played around with how to GraphQL, um, then you'll learn pretty quick and pick this up through Gatsby pretty nicely. Um, all right, so it shows us a little screenshot of what we could expect and what goes on with that, what kind of data is available. And let's just see, when we first, if I delete all this, there we go. Okay, when we first boot it up, and I'm actually going to go full screen with this so we could see this a bit better. It gives us some information and it shows us what an example query looked like. And then more importantly, I think, uh, shift control P is going to be to prettify, control enter, is to uh, run it and then control space is to search for something or you could just start typing. So the nice thing about a GraphQL interface like this is that it knows all the data so it will smart suggest things that you could use, um, which is pretty cool. All right, so in the tutorial then, and let me bring it back over here. All right, so in the tutorial it shows you, hey, this is GraphQL, you could start deleting it, you could start typing things and it shows that there are a few different options and what you could get with it and it, and it suggests that you go in and try to look in the site and the site metadata and get the title as well as some other information. So when you're first starting off with this, um, I love the suggestion. So let's go ahead and if we start off a query like this and we hit control space, it will give us a few different options and it tells us that site is one of the things um, that we could check out. So we come into site I think if you just hit control enter now with site, yeah, if you hit control enter, it will auto complete and show you. So we've got the ID for our site is site. And then it shows us that we could get some other data like uh, site, or if I hit control space, it'll show us all the data we could get. But I wanna go to site metadata because we've looked at that and on its own, that won't work and it'll show you an error. But if I hit control enter, it will auto complete and give us the title of our site. So remember before when we were trying to make stuff up, like I was like, can we just do meta? No, because that wasn't defined, but site meta is, so we could use that. However, we can't use it on and own. On its own, we gotta get the title inside of it. So you're kind of getting the syntax for what GraphQL looks like. And eventually we'll be able to copy and paste these kind of queries into our code. Now there's more that we could explore as well. You could get the parent of stuff. You can get the port of things. Um, you can get the host that you're on for a site. And then there are other options too, like all site pages, we can complete that and notice that now it's going to give us our home page, our about page, our 404 page. We could drill in and rather than getting the title, we could look to see what's available. We could see, ah, where's the path going? We can get the component that is running for that page. So we could see this, the 404 is running a certain component. This is running our about, this is running our index. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we can get path, JSON name, component name. Yeah, that's kind of it. If a plugin created that specific thing. So we could see all site pages is one. Let's see another one. And all of these have kind of the, the multiple to get all of them, or we could get a single site page um, by providing it information um, like that. So 
This is how we use GraphQL, and I'm doing the control space, and I'm doing the control enter in order to execute. So if I delete this, it won't automatically update. Um, I have to hit control enter for it to run, or I could hit this, or if our stuff is all looking jacked up, um, I could prettify it, or I could press this prettify button. There you go. All right, so when you're working with GraphQL, what you'll often do, and we'll see this in the tutorial, is you do a test query. You try to find what it is that you're looking for, and then you could copy and paste that into your code. And as we'll see, Gatsby has a really cool setup for how to just plop in a query, and that will populate all your component. Cool, all right. So that's GraphQL, and what it's going to get into now are source plugins. So it's a really smart architecture that Gatsby has. They don't want you hard coding all of your data connections. Um, they usually want you building a plugin, which are super easy to do. We'll get to that in this uh, live stream eventually, showing how to build plugins for Gatsby. And you basically just install that plugin. That handles all of those connections. So when we get to WordPress, we'll often be using plugins. We won't write everything from scratch, um, which isn't cheating. This is a smart way to build it. So. We're going to play with a source plugin. We're going to play with our first one, and this is a file system. So this is pretty cool because it can allow you to look at the files on the computer, and this isn't just JavaScript that's running in the console. When we use Gatsby, it's running on the server on your computer, so it's in the Node environment, which means it has access to run all of those commands uh, that Node would be able to and look at everything on the file side. So I'm going to stop my development server, and I'm going to go ahead and run npm install save Gatsby source file system. So it's important we got to stop the server to do that, and then we'll have to configure our site to work with that as well. Now remember, I copied over um, the last tutorial, so we'll probably already have some plugins set up there. Hold on, I want my Gatsby config. Cool. And so underneath plugins, it's telling us to add a new one. And this will resolve to Gatsby source file system. And then we could pass it some options as well. So we'll say get the name of the source folder or get the source folder. And then the path you're going to follow is direct name, which I believe will be passed into it so we don't have to provide that, and then the source. Is that looking right? Cool. Now, I don't know if we could go, yeah, save that, restart it, and let's try it up again. And it should give us the ability to search through files on our system right off the bat, right in that graph EQL, because we've defined them for our system. So Gatsby develop. Go ahead and boot it back up and check out our thing again here. Zoom out so we can see a little bit more. All right, I reloaded, reloaded. And now if I hit control space, notice that I have all file and I can hit uh, control enter. Okay, so now we see edges and node. Edges is a basically collection of stuff and then node is an individual item in it. This is a uh, GraphQL. Actually, let me zoom this out a little bit so that we can see better. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer. Okay, so now we can see all of the files, uh, but we only have their IDs. So let's go ahead and look up something else. Let's look up, uh, da, 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 da. what's name do? I'm curious about that. So I'll delete the ID. Cool, index layout, cool, it gives us all the name of our files. Nice, okay, now let's come back to the tutorial because I think it mentions some more things that we could check out. Cool. All right, so it shows that we have file, it says hit all file and hit control enter. And it gives us the ID and it shows us all of that, that's cool. And now it says that it wants us to delete the ID and try adding in some other things, so it gives us Relative path size, pretty size, extension, and birth time. Relative path size, pretty size, extension, and birth time. Cool, let's go in and do that. Okay, so we had relative path, something with extension. Remember, birth time was one of them, and then there's one other one. Pretty size, cool. And you can see how easy it is to query. 
and now we've got all of this. So what's really cool about this um, is that soon we're gonna be just copying and pasting something like this in to get our data, um, but we can see all of the data right there. All right, cool. So building a page. So now it says, let's go ahead and create a page called My Files, and we're gonna see how to import our data um, and use that within Gatsby itself. Okay, so let's go into our file system. I'm gonna come under source components, or is this a page? Yeah, it's gonna be under pages. So I come under pages and I do my-files.js. Let me zoom this in a bit. Cool. And now it wants us to build a page. So I'm going to import React from React. And then I'm going to import GraphQL, oop, QL from, Gra from Gatsby. And then I'm gonna import layout that I already built. Component slash layout, nice. Okay, now I'm going to export a, I'm gonna pass in data, which we'll see how we get in a second. We haven't looked at that yet. And then I'm going to just log out the data. Love this, first step always uh, log out what you got. And then I'll just return a basic component that has the layout and then a div inside of it with a hello world. Hello, my files. Gotta be a little different, right? Okay, cool. So now if we come to our site, which I didn't have open because I just have this GraphQL interface. Um, and do I have errors here? GraphQL is, we never said, okay. I haven't finished what they want us to do. All right, so now down here, we need to export a const called query. And what Graph or what Gatsby will do, and I don't know all the working internals of Gatsby yet, so I'm kind of assuming some of this, but what I believe they do is when this component is used, this query will be executed, and then the data from that will be passed in as data here. Okay, that's my understanding of what's going on here. So they want us to create a GraphQL query where we say query, And then we could literally just paste in what we built in GraphEQL here. So we could take all files, or all file, right? Paste that in, we've got edges, node. So it says, get all the files. These are all the files for each one. Get me the relative path, the pretty size, the birth time. And then we could customize this, it looks like, from now equal to true. Cool. Okay, so the console data is that now we should be able to visit this page on our site. So if I come to my site and I go to slash my files, we'll see, cool, I got hello my files. And if I open up the console, because we console log this data, we'll see that we've got all file, edges, node, inside of the node, all of these, all of our files. So this is pretty cool. And you can guess what's coming next, which is we're going to take this from being a console log here and we're going to build out an actual uh, table or something that shows all of our files. So let's come back into the tutorial here and shows us just like that. Now it wants us to build an actual, uh, yeah, now we gotta build something else. So let's come in here and take that out. We've got an H1, hello, or my site's files. And then we need a table and we need a T head. TR, TH, I don't know. Some of you use, does this work? No, that didn't work. Okay, so the first one is relative path. The second one is pretty size. The third one is extension. Fourth one is birth time. Cool. Then we need a T body. And now we need to map over everything. So we go into our data, we get all file, we get our edges, and then we map over it. And this is a super common convention where, where we just basically map over edges of whatever it is, that collection of data. So we'll see this a lot. 
So we get our node from in that, and it also looks like it's getting us our index. So that could be helpful to play around with. And now we can return a tr. Oh, that's not working. Okay. TR, we'll give it a key, uh, so that's what we're using. Or again, index is not a great key, but in this case, it should be fine, although we could probably give it a unique ID. We could get the ID um, of it down here like this, and we could probably just use um, node.id there. I'm gonna leave it at in as index, but from what I've heard, index is not always our best bet with uh, Keys. Although this won't be updating live. Oh, that's why I guess it doesn't matter because um, this probably won't be changing um, since it is compiled and sent to the server. But something to consider. You do have an ID, so I would just have used that. Relative path. Cool. And then we could get the pretty size. Then we could get the extension. Then we can get the birth time. Cool. Okay, so let's try it now. What? That page looks amazing. Look how cool that is. When they were last changed, everything that's going on, it's a nice looking table. I guess this typography um, styles that we're using definitely are giving us some styles here because a normal table would not look that nice <laughs> without some CSS. So. Thanks to that going on in the background. But now we can see um, what happens. So I wanna zoom out here and like just process this because it's important. If we have um, a page, okay, so we're inside of a page right now, and if we pass in data, or if we pull out data, and we have a query that is a, gra gra there's a GraphQL query, that's a GraphQL query, and it's searching for something, then all of this data will get passed in. So we have access to data, and then we have access to all file. We could have probably like destructured that further and just gotten all file by itself, but I imagine it's nice to have data. Then we map over all of these ones and we get everything that has access to it. And like I said, like I think we could have just done ID. I think that's the only thing I would have done different. I wanna see if that still works. Developer tools, React. Yeah, so that's a unique key. Yeah, I think I like that one, but whatever. Minor, minor details at this point. But I think honestly that that is everything that I wanted to hit up about this plugin. Let's see, what's coming next? Now we know, then we start working with source plugins to pull data into Gatsby. So right now we're just using a source plugin to look at files within the Gatsby setup. But next we're gonna look at transformer plugins and how to get data. Like this is where the WordPress stuff is gonna start coming in. We'll look at some markdown first, but then we'll look at WordPress and we could look at creating our own plugins. We could look at how to plug in with not just WordPress, but Contentful and a bunch of the other CMSs out there as well. So really cool stuff we got going on. I hope that you're finding this helpful. If you do like subscribe, do all that good jazz, throw a comment, say hey in my chat over at JavaScript for WP. And of course, all of this is just free prep work that, so that you could see behind the scenes how I build a course and the research I do. But my headless WordPress with Gatsby course is what um, I'm trying to push here. So if you head over to JavaScript for WP, you can check it out pre-order um, and get a super discount on that. I think it's like 50% off or something like that right now. All right, have a good one, y'all. Until next time, peace.